Since data is at the heart of so many software applications, it almost goes without saying that interactive data can be a great tool for engaging your stakeholders. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through a typical use case for interactive data in an IRI simulation. Here we focus on the capture and display of field level data, commonly referred to as user input. Our goal is to set up the registration form shown here so the data entered by our reviewer is displayed on a confirmation page. As an extra bonus, we'll set up the confirmation page so the reviewer can edit any of the information captured on the previous page. There are three requirements for capturing data on a page. A form widget, data flow, and a submit form action. First, the form widget. To submit form data, all of our user input widgets must be contained within a form widget. The best approach is to start out with an empty form widget and add all of your page widgets to the form as you go. Since we skipped that step, the next best approach is to wrap the widgets in a form. Just lasso all of the page widgets, right click, wrap in, form. So we don't end up with scroll bars, we'll also configure the form scroll settings accordingly. Now for the data flow. Before we can display the user input on the confirmation page, we need to store it on the clipboard. Think of the clipboard as temporary data storage. Data sent to the clipboard during a review session is cleared out when the session ends. The clipboard widget we add to the canvas is simply a visual reference for data flowing into or out of the clipboard. To send data from a user input, we'll drag the page widget onto the clipboard widget and choose Send Data. Creating a field label enables us to use the data once we have it on the clipboard. The red data flow line shows both the direction of the data flow and the name of the field being sent. We can also inspect the data flow in the clipboard widget's properties panel. To complete the data flow on this page, we would repeat this process for each user input widget. Note that we specified output values for our two radio buttons. Now that we've built our form and set up the data flow, we can add the submit form action. Just drop an action widget onto the canvas, choose submit reset form on the left, and click done. Since the register button should trigger the action, we'll connect that to the canvas widget. The only thing left to do on this page is set up the navigation to the confirmation page. On the confirmation page, our goal is to display the data we just captured on the previous page. To do this, we'll add a clipboard widget to the canvas and drag it to each of our text widget placeholders. Since we've already created the fields on the previous page, we can simply select them from the list in the Select a Field window. For the city, state, and zip code placeholders, we'll use a single text widget. To map the data flow to specific words, we'll move our mouse side to side over the widget until only the words we want are highlighted. To test our data flow, let's launch from the beginning of our scenario, the registration page. We'll add some sample data, click register, and the data is displayed on our confirmation page as expected. Note that the fields we didn't enter on the previous page are blank. Taking the next logical step in our scenario, let's say that we want our reviewer to edit some data in the confirmation page and save their changes. To do this, we need to create a dynamic display that includes an alternate view with user inputs that the reviewer can edit. We'll start by wrapping our page widgets in a section, and then creating a duplicate view from the section. Since we'll need to capture any edits made in this view, we'll need to convert the section to a form. Before we edit the contents of the new view, let's name everything properly in the Views panel. We'll also make sure the read-only view is set as the default view. We'll need to replace the text placeholders with user input widgets, which we'll copy and paste from our registration form. We'll also want to change the button labels. And finally, we can map the data flow from the clipboard to the user inputs. We'll submit the form data from the Save button. Since a Submit Form action invokes a page refresh, we don't need any other navigation on this page. Finally, let's associate a Switch Views action with the Edit button to switch to the editable view. So we can start out with the data we captured earlier. We'll toggle back to our browser and refresh the confirmation page to update it with our changes. Now when we click the Edit button, we can edit the data in the form. Since clicking Save not only submits the data, but also refreshes the page, our dynamic display switches back to the default view, and the data is updated. This tutorial just scratched the surface of what you can do with field-level data and the clipboard in iRIS, but it should give you an idea of what's possible. If you're interested in learning more, our advanced tutorials should be your next stop. Thanks for watching.